Hi everyone, it's Chris. I'm the co-founder of BodySwaps and I'm here to guide you through our demo modules. So in this module, you're going to see a medley of activities taken from four different um, learning modules. So we have over 20 different types of activities in BodySwaps. We're going to see only four from four different modules. So that's just a teaser. First and foremost, let's me pick an avatar for myself. Here we go. And then let's jump in the first of those activities, which is spotting non-inclusive behavior that's taken from our gender inclusion module. So this activity is called an observation. We find it across many of our modules. And as the name indicates, you have to observe two characters behave with one another. And in this case, pick whenever sexist Sam on the left here is uh, acting inappropriately towards Sophie. Let's go. So I'm going to click on the controller every time I see or hear Sam saying something inappropriate. Hi, thanks for meeting us. It's been a good couple of weeks since our last project review meeting, hasn't it? I think it'll be good to update you on where we are. I might as well start. I've probably got more to report. You don't mind, do you? Well, actually, I do have... From my point of view, things are going very well. Despite the challenges we've faced, I've managed to keep us on budget. But as I mentioned to you last week, my main concern is the project timeline, and we'd be wise to spend this meeting reviewing where we are with it. Last week? Have I missed something? Oh, sorry, we had a chat last Friday. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> it was probably one of your days off with your kid. If you've had a conversation without me, it would be good if you brought me up to speed. Relax, love. It was just a coffee. It's natural that we might discuss elements of the project if we see each other. I mean, if you're part-time, that's less likely to happen, isn't it? I'm not part-time. I work from home on Fridays. Yeah, right. Shall we go back to your point about the timelines? I'm still waiting on those figures from you in order to build out the marketing narrative and strategy. And you'll get them. Stop flapping. I'm on it. They'll be with you on Friday. You should be able to turn it around quickly. Oh, but she doesn't work Fridays. Okay, so I picked up five out of the eight uh, bad behaviors in this case. I can therefore revisit uh, whichever one I want to or learn about my mistakes. And you'll get them. Stop flapping. I'm on it. They'll be with you on Friday. You should be able to turn it around quickly. Oh. But she doesn't work Fridays. So I get a little bit more information about what it is I did wrong. So this was the first of the four activities we're going to do today. Let's jump right into the second, practice providing feedback. So this activity is a guided conversation. In this case, we are going to be talking with Jeremy here. Um, and Jeremy just had a rep, uh, terrible report with Leonard, which we witnessed in that, uh, in that giving feedback module. I'm going to need to make the right choice to get Jeremy to prompt, to prompt Jeremy, sorry, to reflect on his behavior. Do you think that was a good chat with Leonard? It was okay, all things considered. What's up? So here I made a mistake by asking a closed question. Let's try again. How do you think your conversation went with Leonard? It was so-so. Could have been better. Leonard isn't a good team player at the best of times, right? Okay, good choice. We're getting there. Why do you say that? Didn't you hear? He tried to blame me for him not having those figures. And how would you describe your communication with Leonard? A good mix of firm and friendly, I'd say. You know, a couple of jokes here and there. But the team do need to know who's in charge and what I want, don't they?
Okay, so now let's answer a job interview question. Here we go. Why should we hire you? Why should we hire you? So firstly, I'm getting a little bit of a hint connected to that question on how I could apply the context, action and result strategy to answer this. So context, set out the key strengths and characteristics that are pertinent for the role, link your characteristics to the company's culture and mission, and explain how your characteristics will add value to the company. I think the key characteristic for this role is the desire to help people and the curiosity to investigate new technologies and new ways of doing so. BodySwap's mission is that everyone deserves a fair chance at life, and that everyone can learn new soft skills if given a chance. And that's why I think both my desire to help people and my curiosity for new technologies and new ways of learning can be combined in this new role at BodySwap's. I think the key characteristic for this role is the desire to help people and the curiosity to investigate new technologies and new ways of doing so. BodySwap's mission is that everyone deserves a fair chance at life, and that everyone can learn new soft skills if given a chance. And that's why I think both my desire to help people and my curiosity for new technologies and new ways of learning can be combined in this new role at BodySwap's. I'm now getting some results about how fast I spoke. So there's no good and bad, right? We're just giving guidance on whether people would like to try it a different way. Filler words, hand gestures, I was lively, and eye contact. So that was the famous body swaps. Um, let's finish this little activity well, and go into the last that's the end activity. of the interview simulation. Thank you for coming. Bye. Finally, let's do the very last of those four mini activities in the demo module, which is to give a public presentation. Okay, so here I am. I have one minute to present on the subject of three reasons to use VR to learn soft skills. I'm going to have some slides. Okay, and start recording. Hi everyone, I'm Chris, I'm the CEO of BodySwaps and I'm here to talk to you today about three reasons to use VR to practice public speaking. The first one is that it feels like the real thing. I can look at all of you, you're looking at me in the eyes and I feel the pressure of being in the room. The second reason, it's, it's a safe space. Obviously, none of you are real people. I know that I can say whatever I want without risking being judged, risking everyone talking about me behind my back. I can practice safely as much as I want because, well, this is a virtual space and I'm doing this from the office. I could do this from home. I could do this on the very morning of my big presentation. And so, in summary, that's why practicing public speaking in VR is great. It's safe, it's repeatable, but it feels real. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Chris, I'm the CEO of BodySwaps, and I'm here to talk to you today about three reasons to use VR to practice public speaking. The first one is that it feels like the real thing. I can look at all of you, you're looking at me in the eyes, and I feel the pressure of being in the room. The second reason, it's, it's a safe space. Obviously, none of you are real people. I know that I can say whatever I want without risking being judged, risking everyone talking about me behind my back. I can practice safely as much as I want because, well, this is a virtual space, and I'm doing this from the office. I could do this from home. I could do this on a very morning of my big presentation. And so, 
In summary, that's why practicing public speaking in VR is great, it's safe, it's repeatable, but it feels real. Thank you. I'm now getting some results. Duration of my speech, just under one minute. Spoke very fast, 177 words per minute. Spoke quite loud, which is good to project my voice. Maintain good eye contact, 92%. Some gesturings of my hand to bring people in. And an intonation that was quite varied. So overall, a pretty good performance. And this is the end of the demo. Thank you.